Okay, today, as you will notice, I am I am accompanied by four lovely people from all around the world. These are seasoned EFT, OEFT practitioners, um, very conversant with the unseen therapists. And we're going to discuss today the uses of um, the unseen therapist for parental issues. And you're going to find a lot of this interesting, but each of them have an example, et cetera. But just to introduce to you, we have, if you'll raise your hand, guys, uh, Marion Billich from New York. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we have Anne Ryan from Ireland and uh, Nami Osakabi from Canada and Mary McGrory from France. So let me begin. I, I will start this off with my own um, experience and, and advice, and et cetera, with with the unseen therapist for use with with children. Right. And that's something I've talked about for some time. But it's really, really important because one of the true advantages we have is with the the whole EFT process is to be able to reduce our children's traumas, issues, and so on as they occur, as they are growing up. And believe me, they have them every day, okay? They go to school, somebody teases them, they fall off their bike, they get hurt, they somebody yells at them. That, that, I mean, they have all these issues that go on all day. So one thing you can do is when you put them to bed at night, you can say, well, how was your day today, Johnny? And Johnny was, oh, it was a good day, except, you know, somebody kicked me in in the leg and it still hurts and I feel bad. Okay. All right. Well, that's the kind of thing that happens every day, one way or shape or form with children. Okay. And if it doesn't get resolved, it's just part of the baggage that builds uh, over time. All right. Why not? As you're putting them to bed, maybe reading the bedtime story, et cetera, ask them this question. And then as they talk about it, just talk, talk about, you don't have to use the term unseen therapist, because that may be a little advanced for them. They don't know what unseen therapist is and probably don't care. But they do typically understand angels, the good fairy, or some other thing like that and say, well, let's just bring in the good fairy, let's say, or your, or your special angel. Let's just be quiet a moment. What you're doing there is bringing an unseen therapist, of course, and you can bring an unseen therapist yourself surrogately while you're talking to your child. And in that way, on a daily basis, you are unloading bit by bit, piece by piece, this baggage and they that we all collect, and they will end up, maybe, I can't say all the baggage gone, but a whole lot less baggage. And that's a that's the point of it. And I, you know, I, I wish every child had that advantage when they were growing up because we would have a whole lot fewer angry people, resentful people and, and so on in this world. So that's one. All right. Uh, Marion, let me call on you. Uh, you have an example of your own, do you? Well, I don't have a lot of my own examples because I don't have a young child. I have a a grown woman with a child, but I have used the unseen therapist with her. The way she's most helpful to me is when she tells me, keep your mouth shut, don't say anything. That's the best advice I've ever gotten from the unseen therapist. Okay, that's the unseen therapist advice. You snip it. Okay, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're yeah. you're ending up with some kind of a smart remark or something. <laughs> what, whatever it is, if I don't like something my daughter says or whatever it is, I hear her say, "Don't say anything." That's the best parenting advice you could get because I know that if I were a different kind of parent and I were to say things, I wouldn't be very close with my daughter she wouldn't be very close with me so that was my prime example of how she's helped me um be a good parent even though my daughter's an adult okay but i have had occasion at i'm sorry you have a question go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead well i have had experiences where people i'm working with will ask me parenting advice because i'm a psychologist and 
Yes, I do have a lot of background in child psychology and all of those things. And I was a parent. But the best parenting advice I can give them is to turn it over to the unseen therapist. Let's see what she says, because she knows a lot more about parenting than I do. And so we do that. We'll ask the unseen therapist what, what to say, what would be helpful, what to do. And I usually start by giving an example, usually of something that Nami has talked about, and she'll talk about her experiences after, and how turning it over to the unseen therapist helped her with her own child. And there's one particular example that I was just talking to Nami about that I use a lot, which hopefully she'll tell us about. I don't want to tell it myself. But once I give that example, people get it that, yes, of course, the unseen therapist helped me with this problem or that problem. Of course, the unseen yeah. therapist is where yeah. to turn. Uh, so. uh, the uh, one thing about children <laughs> is that they are very good. In fact, they have a PhD in how to pull your strings and they will do that <laughs> over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And just the, just the idea of keep zip it or ask unseen therapists what to say, do, behave or whatever in that case uh, can bring monumental dividends. Okay. I think I just summarized what you said, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So Anne, um, you have an example? I have an example. My son, who is 12, um, has always been a little bit anxious at school. And about a year ago, he changed school. So you can imagine that really, you know, um, heightened the anxiety. Um, and it's something I brought, you know, to my lovely friends here. And we worked a lot on with the unseen therapist. But the, the biggest so we worked a lot with it and I worked a lot with it and I worked a lot with him and the the little code word he came up with um was cp the two letters the letter c and the letter p because when he was a lot younger and he didn't really know how to spell very well he thought cp stood for say prayer so when I would drop him off he would say to me cp which is his way of saying please ask the unseen therapist um Anyway, move on to him changing school and everything got, I mean, extremely heightened in terms of the anxiety. And my levels equally went up. The biggest insight I had from the unseen therapist was that I needed to work on my issues of school. It's like I was being so triggered by what he was going through, but it went back to my insecurities at a certain point in my schooling and my anxiety. As I worked on that, <laughs> surprise surprise his anxiety has just come down monumentally I mean monumentally so it was like not always directly working with him or asking the unseen therapist on behalf of of, of him directly although I did pl plenty of that but the, the the turning point was just realizing how activated I was and that it was bouncing off the foundation of some unresolved anxiety I had had, um, you know, particularly around the age of 12 or 13, surprisingly. Well, you know, that's fascinating because, because I've said many times, I've been sitting in this chair for a long time now, okay? But I, in many cases, I have seen the child's issues are picked up from the parent. And, and they don't really notice it because the interface and the interaction is always so integrated all the time. But, uh, you know, the child can get anxious just by the sometimes a smothering mother, for example, not to say that that's your case here, but th there can be smothering mothers or anxious mothers or critical mothers or I've got to get my mother's love. or da -da -da. And when mother, if mother can pick up from that, which is a parenting mm -hmm. issue, then mother gets calmer, the child gets calmer, and that's what that's what you're echoing here, I think. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. good. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Nami, Marion has set you up beautifully with your, <laughs> with your little story. <laughs> Please. So when it was, when my son was six, we were all at the park, and then it was time to head home. Baby was getting, I have three boys. So um, a baby, he would have been under one. And then I had 
my four-year-old and six-year-old at the time and we were about to leave the park baby was getting upset I needed to nap him so I just needed to get him moving um the boys had ridden the bike to the park so I said let's we gotta head back let's head back my older one just started crying he did not want to ride his bike back home he said he was too tired he couldn't do it baby was crying my middle one was on his bike helmet on zipping off <laughs> and I do ask the unseen therapist for help on many occasions but I often can't hear her in the midst of my baby crying and my other son crying and my <laughs> middle son <laughs> <laughs> leaving there's a lot of like huh, overwhelm and a little bit of panic but I called on her I called on her and I was saying things like, no, we got to go, we got to go. But I heard her say, tell him to leave the bike. You are more important than the bike. I love you. Let's go home together. And so I said it because I trust her. But in my mind, I was thinking, I can't leave this bike. <laughs> like, I want to <laughs> pass it down to the other two children. Should I, what should I do like this? This isn't what I normally would have said and done. Well, let me, I, let me, if I can interject something, I didn't, I'm not, if I remember this, I've heard this story before, but if I remember it was that that son didn't want to ride his bike. I remember, I remember he, he just didn't, he wanted to ride it. He did not want to ride it. You wanted him, you don't want to leave a bike behind. Da, 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 da. Okay. I don't know if you said that or not, but I didn't pick it up. Anyway, that's a piece in there. He didn't want to write it home. So go he ahead. Please. It home. He said he was too tired or his legs were too tired. But I said, I said what the unseen therapist said. I said, let's leave it. You are more important than the bike. Let's all go home together, safe together. Um, and I love you. And so I said those things. He was upset for a little bit, but then he started to go towards his bike. And <laughs> he just picked it up went on it and then we rode home and he cried the whole way. I remember him crying, but she kept telling me to talk to him too, to say, you know, I am very proud of you. You know, you're taking responsibility for the bike that you rode here, you're riding it back. I'm very proud of you. But the emphasis really was on, I care more about him than any bike, than yeah. any other thing. Yeah. I care more about you. And you being safe with me is all that matters. And I think any child would want that message. Well, yeah. And I'm trying to put myself in your position. Because if I were you in that position, I would be beset with, I've got three kids to manage and they all want to go different direction, do different things. Da, 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 da. And I want to get home because I've got to do the dinner and I've got to da, da, all the stuff that I have to do. And this is in my way. And I'm likely to be a little bit short you know, <laughs> um, not be as caring as unseen therapist is given you to do. It's not a criticism. I, I, that's what I would do. I would find some way to let's get this show on the road and get it on, on the road now, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And the other thing I thought of doing was just walking away because my middle son had already mm -hmm. jetted off and I wanted to make sure he wouldn't cross the street without me. So the other thought I had was just heading off and saying, you know what? Bye because I know my oldest son's personality is one of fear and he would come after me. I knew that. So I thought maybe I should just go. And she very clearly was like, no, you don't do things to invoke fear in him and have him do this out of fear. Do the loving thing, say the loving thing. And so yeah. despite the chaos, it ended in a loving act and him knowing I loved him more than his bike versus him coming along home with us safe, but out of fear, right? Out of fear that we would have abandoned him and left him or left his bike as well. So yeah, that was, that was a moment where I realized I could lead with love rather than invoke fear just to get them to do what I would like out of convenience. So, yeah. Yeah. Could, could I just add something? I remember you saying this and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nami, you said to him, I love you, but I don't love your bike. 
So he had wanted you to carry it back home. So he said, if, if you're not going to ride it, we need to leave it here. Did you say that? I love you. But because I thought that really made the point. I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I know I said, you are more important than the bike. Your bike. You can leave the bike. We can leave it. You are more important to me than the bike. How many parents, I know I've been in that position, or I was when I had a young child, where a child didn't want to do something, and our Im impulse was to begin walking away. And so out of fear, they would come running. I I'm sure many people listening to this have been in that place. And it's so wonderful that by listening to the unseen therapist, you were able to turn something that could have been a negative and instill fear in your child into something that was a learning experience and very positive. So I just thought that was just such a wonderful story. And I use it a lot with people to illustrate how helpful it is to, to turn things over to the unseen therapist or to listen for advice from her. Yeah, and behind all those stories, I want to emphasize for our audience um, that you guys have been around the unseen therapist for years. Okay, so you have developed an ability to listen. We don't newcomers, you know, have a tend to have a problem listening. Unseen therapist is always guiding. We're just not always listening. But the more you get involved with it, the more you understand, experience the wisdom of that unseen therapist within um, the more you'll trust her, the more you'll get involved with her, the more, and so on. So these stories evolve out of that. Mm -hmm. So Mary, do you have a story for us? I do. And I'm also going to thank Nami for this. Um, Nami has mentioned many times that she, she always asks the unseen therapist, you know, what should I say, speak for me, or um, show me how I should act, um, which I took over this habit and started applying with my kids. And it's been very helpful in many different ways, but um, more importantly, to help me to get myself out of the way. Because before you go and speak to your kids about something, particularly when they're teenagers, my two are teenagers, I no longer would be, you know, I'm no longer in a position where I would want to use kind of my my position and say, OK, this is the way it is. You must do it my way by my rule book. Uh, it just is that way. Uh, or trying to be clever with, you know, giving them two options, the kind of like childlike parenting things you would do. So they're, they're far too clever for that kind of stuff now. So when I have to go and speak to them about something that's really important and I want to really show respect for them as they are uh, as young young um young adults or adolescents uh it's challenging because you get worried and if it's something to do with schooling then maybe i might be worried about what the national education is expecting of me as a parent and it can get really confusing sometimes and i don't want to bring that worry to the table, so to speak, when I go to speak to them, I want to go there and really be calm and open. Uh, but that's really not easy when you're feeling emotional. So asking her, I'll always do it before I go. I always like stop before the door, before you open the door to go into their room or wherever they are and just say, please come and help me say the right thing. Help me to act the right way. Um, and that's it. And I trust her. And I don't, know what I'm going to say in advance that's what's really strange it really is she really it, you know she tells me as I'm speaking the words are coming out of my mouth I have no idea what's going to come out until I say it and I'm always really really surprised and I know it's her words because very often I wouldn't have said it in that way or I wouldn't have thought of even saying that kind of thing you know um and it always works a lot more smoothly thanks to that and because I'm not sitting there thinking, oh, my God, how am I going to um, control this situation and get him to do what I want him to do, which is me being full of all my fears, because I'm calm, then I can just sit and quietly wait. And I think that is also really helpful for them that I'm not pushing, 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 that I'm just sitting there and they can sense that we are 
having a conversation, even though there's these moments of silence that can go on for a while as we both calm down or not calm down, but both try to, you know, walk our way through whatever subject we're, we're talking about, because sometimes it can be really challenging when sure. they don't want to do something. So that has been hugely, hugely helpful. And I'm, I always walk away like going, I don't believe that just happened. You know, that was just so much better than I could have imagined. And I know the boys are very happy too, because I don't come in dragging all my, my, my baggage and, and my fears with me. I go in there trusting that she's going to help me to say the right thing. And it happens quite calmly. That's what's really interesting. Good. Because I trust her, it happens calmly. There, There is what I hear when you're saying that, Mary, or is built into that a sort of a level of trust that she's going to come through somehow. You're going to open your mouth and something yeah. better than you can do yourself is going to somehow show up. Okay, Now, yeah. that's, that's a level of trust. That doesn't come to a brand newbie to unseen therapist overnight, typically. You've got to give it a try and stub your toe and succeed and fail and over time. But you've developed an area, a place where trust is growing and growing. Am I saying it right? Yeah, but I mean, I remember at the very beginning when I was trying it, I had no idea what was going to happen. But I knew she wasn't going to fail me. I mean, I, I didn't think that she was just going to, you know, drop me in it and, and not send me any kind of, not well, help me in any way. At the very least... I felt a lot calmer going in there, knowing yeah. that I wasn't going in on my own. Well, there's a there's a sort of an equation going on that I'm hearing anyway. You are asking unseen therapists to help you with the words, yes. So you are she is now responding, but you have to listen. If you still got your ego in the way and all kinds of other stuff, she can be talking and you can drown her out. Okay. So can anybody listening, especially newcomers to this. But you've gotten to the point where, my term again, you've trusted to the point where you're also able to listen, even though you may have ego reasons not to listen for the moment. Did I say it right? Well, as you're talking, I've realized that part of what really helps is Hold on, I have to try and find the right words for it. I've just realized that this whole kind of slowing down and listening part is another advantage. It calms everything down. I'm not going in there, you know, with my, uh, I'm going to make this happen attitude. Um, the fact that I have to sit and hopefully get the message from her, I'm actually sitting very calmly. I don't have an agenda because I'm waiting for her to tell me what the agenda is. Yeah. So that as well is a really big part of it. So I have to sit and wait for the right words to come. And in that time of waiting, I think they sense that. They sense that I'm connected to love on some level and that I'm not trying to push them and that I'm not feeling scared. Yeah, there's no negative emotion there, really. I'm just like yeah. Yeah. waiting. So I have to be patient. And then something just comes to mind and it all just goes, it all just falls into place. Yeah. But I think that's an important part of it that I, I don't have to have the answer immediately, you know? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, we've told our stories uh, before we, before we uh, uh, draw the curtain on this. Does anybody else have anything else you want to add here before we, before we leave? I just wanted to, encourage everyone to just keep asking in the midst of the chaos of like screaming children i couldn't hear her for so long when it was a stressful situation i couldn't hear her but i have consistently just kept saying please help me please help me please help me please help me and at some point it just came through and it yeah. wasn't all the time there were many moments where i didn't hear anything again but I would just encourage everyone to just keep asking and ask for help in opening yourself up to seeing, hearing, feeling, knowing her messages in any yeah. way that it may come. Yeah, it's a it's a skill that we develop over time. It's a, and it's a process even to develop that skill. But it's a big skill, big skill. And I hope our audience 
got that basic message. So tell you what, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.